Hi, Ivan. Hi, Paul. Great to be back. How are you guys? So today, in continuing on our contextualizing of this digital world, one topic that we've been talking about since the very early days of our show, mobile. Uh, so I think there's no, you know, no argument anymore than you know it's uh, that mobile has overtook the world. I heard that I heard that 2015 is a year of mobile. <laughs> <laughs> like we say, like, like people say every year. Uh, the reason we wanted to to talk about uh, a few topics in mobile today is that uh, first of all, there was an article that was released. Uh, we read it on TechCrunch, but that's the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, which is the body that basically regulates the mobile world, uh, based in Geneva, part of the United Nations. They've uh, released. Uh, the new numbers about mobile broadband penetration. And it looks like that for the first time, mobile broadband is overtaken, uh, overtaken sorry, the uh, internet broadband, the desktop broadband, which basically tells you that now the internet is mobile. It's crazy. I mean, we look when you look at the numbers, and we're going to have the, the 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 links in our in the show notes. It's it's astounding when, when you look at the numbers and you look at the penetration and the the, the connection and the amount of uh, uh, subscriptions. You know, there is something like 7.1 billion mobile subscriptions in the world. There is 3.2 billion people online. 95% uh, of the world's populations are now within reach of a mobile network signal. 95% of the world population. This is crazy. Also, there is the fact that um, there is about uh, 350 million people without access to internet, uh, mobile or otherwise. Um, and there are many countries that actually are uh, have problems in that. And the five least connected countries are Malawi, Madagascar, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Chad. Uh, so, I mean, th there is a lot of a lot of interesting insights and a lot of very interesting information in that article. We invite you to check it out in the show notes. But you know, just looking at the numbers, it really gives you a, a, um, an idea of the scale of what we are going through. And this is even before. Uh, you know, so Google has uh, is thinking about that because, they, of course, they want more pro more people online, and uh, so they've launched their project Loon, which is basically trying to connect more people to the internet. Facebook has also is also thinking about ways to connect more people. One of the ways is through Internet.org and other initiatives where they, for instance, allow people to have da data access on their mobile phones for almost free. I mean, when they browse Facebook, it, it's it's free. Uh, that's That's been going on in India, for instance, I believe. And but even without these uh, initiatives, you, the, the numbers are already staggering. There's a map on the on the, the article we're going to share. You can see that basically it's true that Africa is the continent that still lags behind Sub-Saharan Africa, especially. Uh, but it's growing there as well. Uh, the countries, because you mentioned the worst, the best countries, of course, South Korea is the one where everybody seems to be connected to a, a next, an unprecedented level. And then you have lots of European countries. The UK, where I live, is number four. Switzerland is number seven. Uh, so you, you, And the US, for those uh, listening for the US, is number 15, actually. So it's not the best, but it's not bad either. So yeah, really, truly, everybody seems to be connected. One of the ways to actually think about that is, uh, because we contextualize now on this show, is we just had Black Friday. Uh, so Black Friday is, of course, not something that happens everywhere in the world. It was, uh, it's a very American, but also in the UK here, a tradition where basically you have a lot of, lot of, lot of massive discount in a single day. It's a pre-Thanksgiving, uh, post-Thanksgiving uh, happening in, in the US. Uh, and uh, the numbers in the US also show the same thing. They show that about a third of the sales on Black Friday were made through mobile, so that's also a very big growth. Uh, most of it was done, actually, uh, if you want to be bickering, um, Apple seems so iOS seems to have taken the lion's share of the, the revenue there. Uh, so same thing. Uh, in the UK, where I live, uh, we've seen also some kind of uh, uptick in, in mobile as well. So people not only browsing, but actually buying through mobile uh, through, these, uh, through that day. Uh, the interesting bit that I read, and I'll put also the article on, on online there, is that not only they do buy online, 
But even when they go to, you know, and you see these crazy videos of people fighting each other to get like a TV or something, this is very American, but it doesn't really happen that much in the UK, though the shops were completely full. I didn't go because I, want, I wanted to survive and breathe. But, <laughs> but one of the things that's interesting is also shows that people are also browsing when they shop. So they actually look for competitive deals when they are in the store uh so they not only they don't buy it directly which shows another layer of this mobility world we live in where simply people just compare do you do that uh, actually yeah i was wanting to say that the, the this is a good example of the Amer americanization of uh different customs around the world uh i am based in poland and uh yes i we walk around and we have black friday here i was like huh uh, <laughs> going to the to the mall on friday and yes it was packed, uh, all the signs everywhere connected with Black Friday. Uh, it was kind of funny because I, I bet that, you know, I will say 80% of the people here do not have an idea what, what's Black Friday because it's a very American, American, uh, I wouldn't call it tradition. Well, maybe it's a tradition. Uh, um, but, but yeah, I mean, when looking at, at those, those interactions, when we have, when you have this uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon as, a, as a, somebody from outside looking what's happening in the States when you see this pandemonium happening on the, at the malls and at the stores, people fighting, literally, uh, you know, hitting each other and, and trying to fight for the TV or something. Uh, and as you mentioned, the, the impact of having a mobile phone next to, um, well, it not only can help you to, to find better deals, but in the worst of the cases, it can help you to defend yourself. So, so <laughs> who knows? <laughs> mobile is also having an impact in your cell defense. Maybe there's an app for that. Actually, also, uh, Amazon was a big winner, obviously, uh, during the sales. There's also been a Cyber Monday, which is kind of the follow-up, but only online. And it has also shown that a lot of uh, the online sales happen through mobile. Uh, apparently, on Thursday and Friday uh, in the US, mobile traffic accounted for nearly 60% of all online shopping traffic and 40% of all online sales. So you see it's almost 50-50 now. Um, uh, Apple was also leading the way along with, uh, uh, um, and uh, sorry, and smartphones were leading the way if you compare them to tablets. So very powerful. Uh, tool, of course, uh, to uh, shop. I didn't shop through mobile myself because I'm not really interested in, in Black Friday, to be really honest. But I mean, it's it's really it's really impressive uh, to see that. Another little anecdote: it seems that in the U.S., in terms, if you look at what people did buy, they bought a lot of TVs, they bought a lot of uh, smartwatches. Apparently, it was very popular. And in terms of smartphones, the smartphone that was the most popular was the iPhone. No surprise there at all. But, Breaking news. <laughs> uh, but continuing on that topic, because it's very linked to the second bit of the show we wanted to talk about, is uh, the um, uh, China. So uh, China has also doesn't have a Black Friday per se. It has a Singles Day. We mentioned it in passing in the last uh, episode, in episode one of our fourth season. They have something called a Singles Day. Uh, which is also a day of massive sales online. They broke all records to an unprecedented level. Do you have the number in front of you, uh, or you, or do you? No, I don't have the. I don't have the number. I think it was the ten or thirteen billion dollars worth of sales or something uh, during a single day. So again, completely massive and crazy. And same thing, same story there. Uh, for instance, Alibaba which is one of the major, uh, which is basically your Amazon in China, but they do a, it's a slightly different model, uh, say this says that mobile transactions represented 72% of total gross merchandise volumes in the first hour and a half of sales. So 72%. So a lot of people, of course, if you think about uh, the one the big channel in, in, in China is WeChat, and I'll let you go run through it because WeChat is really a powerful, powerful methods of selling, but of selling, but not only. Yeah, this is what is crazy. I mean, this is something that we were talking about before the show, how, uh, I mean, talking about mobile, the messaging uh, has become a core element of what we do thanks to these mobile, uh, mobile apps. Uh, and WeChat uh, has become a really, really, really powerful platform. Um, it started as a messaging app app and that was the core uh, activity that you can do with it but what what was really interesting is the fact that 
comparing it with other apps, it was really, really uh, easy to use, very simple. Uh, the author of the article that we're going to be sending, sharing in the in the show notes, talks about you know the the, the his mom can, has doesn't know how to operate the iPad, but knows how to operate uh, WeChat <laughs> because it's very intuitive, very simple, very easy to use. And and uh, some of the very interesting things that they have developed throughout the years is they have developed a very very high depth of engagement uh, because of the social features that they have. I mean, they have, uh, you know, sharing news and links, high quality video, audio and chat, uh, stickers, gaming. There is a lot of different things. And, and one line that I thought was very interesting and that show that is not just about messaging, uh, is about that there is no, this is not only a transactional messages, but rather forms of self-expression. So this opportunity to to really show more about who you are, as opposed to just you know sending you know messages, which is at the at the end of the day what you're doing. What's really interesting is the fact that WeChat has gone not one, not two, not three, but maybe ten steps ahead. Uh, of, of of the norm um, when because they have developed a platform of payment based features uh, it's a platform that is is, is involving e-commerce uh, transportation financial services and when you look at all the things that they've been doing they have developed you know uh, you know different services that you can easily compare with PayPal with uber with Apple pie Apple pie Apple pay uh, with <laughs> Shopify with Twitter. Uh, with Skype, I mean, there is so much stuff going on, and everything started from a simple messaging app that is killing it. So it's really, really interesting how you know, being able to identify a core need, uh, they have been able to to add on, you know, little by little different pieces and develop a huge platform and and have probably you know a huge huge part of the nation. On, on on the platform uh, 24-7. Yeah, and as you say, it's, uh, it's uh, they go way beyond what we're used to here in the West. Although some, you know, we've seen that uh, Facebook is pushing Messenger as a, as a platform, surely because it knows uh, it's going in a similar direction. Uh, we know that, for instance, now more and more brands are looking into Messenger for customer uh, relationship. I know KLM, the airline has started, will start, sorry, using it as a way to communicate with its uh, with its customers the other thing we know that facebook m which is um, basically an ai uh, chat machine will help you do a lot of stuff including apparently because that's in their promo video if you're looking for something to buy uh, it will actually browse it for you and say oh i want to buy a pair of shoes and you will actually specify what kind of shoes via text on messenger messenger will come back so that will be another way also to 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 enhance sales and to enhance messenger based through that wechat for, for for that seems light years away like you said uh, you can there, there are cities in and regions in china where you can pay your utility bills so electricity gas etc directly via wechat so like you said there's a there's a payment uh, stack in there but you can also uh, uh, exchange money with other users directly and since we're talking about selling uh, whether it's for Black Friday or Singles Day there in China, uh, shops can also directly set up shop in within uh, WeChat. There's a platform where they can do that. We've seen that, you know, shopping on Facebook hasn't really taken off the same way. Uh, at least for now, uh, people still rely on on uh, shopping on external uh, websites that are being driven by Facebook to there. But in on WeChat, which is exclusively mobile, let me remind you that although you have a, a little desktop app if you want, you can create directly. Uh, a, a shop and then sell directly to uh, to your customers through there. Actually, the uh, the one of the very big uh, company in um, in uh, in China, JD.com, made a, par a a partnership with Tencent to and through WeChat they offered massive massive discounts, almost worth four hundred million dollars worth of discounts on WeChat during single stay. So you see that they really truly understand that this is the way of 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 doing. If it's true that uh, the other thing is China is uh, still, I mean, the, the, the word is maybe not appropriate because it's too generic, but still an emerging market. So people have discovered, a lot of people have discovered the internet only through mo mobile. They never actually use uh, the internet or rarely use it on desktop. For, the, for them, that's the foundation. Probably in the West where we live, we have a more like, oh, we, we can still rely on our desktop. And so why would you? So there's a, maybe that also explains a s slower uptick in using mobile. But again, all the numbers show that people are more and more doing stuff on mobile. And as you say, you know, from 
WeChat is. I will will push post that link. Uh, comparing all the tools that they offer with Western. Uh, uh, um, yeah, it, we, WeChat for taxes, bills, uh, payments uh, for merchants, for customer service, for productivity, for banking, for fundraising. There is, you know, there is stuff that they are doing for every single one of those uh, of those uh, needs, um, and it's fascinating. You know, we love to we love to try it out. And then the other thing that uh, there was another article I don't have it in front of me, but I remember it was if you're interested in WeChat, it will also put it in the show notes. Anderson Orovitz, the famous uh, VC firm based in the US, had released also an article a few months ago about you know the the landscape of WeChat called Wake Scene in China. Uh, also very fascinating to learn about what they do, and it's it's not only fascinating as a like object of curiosity, but I think part of it is where we are going to go ourselves in other countries in the world, whether you're a country, which Ivan mentioned that the worth connected countries, uh, the four worth connected countries are basically in Africa, but we know that Africa is actually leapfrogging a lot of the technologies in adopting mobile. So we probably see a similar dynamic happening in Africa, but at the same time, in a more industrialized uh, world, and I, I don't like to, to use these terms, but uh, to, it's because they are blanket statements. But a more industrialized world, we will probably also start be using mobile more as a way to do everything. Uh, whether I'm not sure if it's going to be on a single platform or not, but if that does happen, obviously uh, Facebook is, seems to be willing to 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 go there. Uh, we'll finish with with one thing that that also struck your attention because it was slightly uh, related to all this is that. When you talk to a lot of people, they say, okay, so if mobile is so widely adopted, if everybody starts to have data on their mobile and using the, the mobile and internet, it also means that, oh, so my business should be simply done on within an app, an app, right? And that's it. And this is how a lot of people think. We see a lot of startups using that analogy. And there's been an article, an article uh, that was written on Medium by the CEO of Branch, uh, a startup based in the US, that was very interesting because it shows that there's a discovery problem with so many apps now on both Google Play and and the iStore, the App Store on uh, for Apple. It's almost impossible to get above the fold. By above the fold, meaning to simply appear on the results. Uh, when you go on, for instance, of the App Store of iOS, you have like oh the top ten in, in within each category. But if you're not in that top ten. Uh, how do you or how do you rise above the vault? How do you suddenly be become simply uh, noticed by users? And he, he shows, and, and I'm sure you've seen that incredible graph about the you know the relative adoption by uh, to most popular app. And you see that Facebook obviously is everybody seems to be downloading it, and then quickly, quickly, quickly goes down. You see that adoption for even the uh, the tenth app, which is Skype, is already much, much lower. So that that tells you how difficult it must be, right? No, it's crazy. I mean, uh, I mean, as he mentioned, the, the the market is too saturated. The the barriers for adoption and therefore monetization are too high. And uh, one of the one of the statements that he made in the article that I thought it was really, really uh, uh, gives a very good idea of what's the current situation. So it's that in the past four weeks there were 45,000 new apps submitted to the iOS wow. App Store alone. Now, the chances that any of them will ever break into the top 1,000 are effectively 0%. And even if they did, they are still not seeing any amount of traffic to build a successful business. So this is something that it is mind-blowing to think that you know all the effort that you know, developers and, and brands are putting into developing their presence on mobile through apps. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, after only six years, it's getting to a point that is oversaturated and that it's really, really difficult to compete in, in such a saturated market. Yeah, it's absolutely it's absolutely mind blowing to think that it's only taken six years to get there. But there's so there is of course the business model. How can you rise above the fold? I'm using this analogy for the for the third time, uh, but it could also be solved by the discovery issue because it's true that I I was looking for an app the other day and I just barely remember remembered its name. When you try to put it on the search engine the, the name of the app, you have like thousands of apps that resemble it, and you're like. I I cannot find it, uh, which tells you if you don't even know the name of the app and just have a bare idea of what you want. I mean, how many apps you'll find. So 
one of the mo one of the models that we, that he, he explains that could be interesting would be to reset uh, the kind of the, uh, the 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 leaderboard every day, a bit like what uh, Product Hunt uh, does. A product Hunt every day you have uh, products, mm -hmm. uh, podcasts, etc., that are being submitted, and every day resets. So it allows new product to be in that top ten for at least a day, so people can discover it. This is why uh, Product Hunt is so basic, is so uh, successful these days because oh, I discover new stuff, which discovery seems to be getting almost impossible on these apps stores so either uh finding a way like product hunt i mean and i encourage you if you don't know what it is to look look it up because it's a really interesting to, uh, way to find about new services but probably maybe uh, at some point the, uh, the apples and googles of of today could think about a way to make it easier for uh products to be discovered for apps sorry to be discovered directly on, on their app store Yes, and with that, uh, this is the time to say goodbye, uh, because uh, uh, yes, uh, Paul will be traveling a lot again. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise! Uh, jumping from Dubai to Singapore to Lebanon to all over the place. Uh, so uh, chances are that for the next week we might not be able to record a show because we always, you know, we depend on the on the connection and the connectivity and the level of Wi-Fi in in, in, in all these places when we are traveling. Um, but we hope that this uh, episode is going to be so cool and so nice that you're going to be able to listen it many, many, many times while you are walking <laughs> around. Uh, listening to all this fascinating information. Um, anything you would like to add, Paul? No, I mean, if anyone wants to reach out for ideas, for criticism of what we're doing, just uh, the digitalloop.co, all the links are there. Um, and thank you for tuning in, like we said, not each week. And uh, see you in the next episode, Ivan. See you in the next time, and have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.